it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this beautiful stripey spikes square. This is a very easy square to whip up. We're going to be doing some half double crochet stripes of color. And where each color changes, I've added some spike stitches to kind of give it some interest here. And then we're going to learn how to add this very simple border. This square is mostly half double crochet stitches. And so it's really easy. I'm going to show you how to do all the stitches, the half doubles, the spike stitches, and we're going to walk through it every step of the way. Now, if you choose to make this square and make additional squares to create a blanket, you could get creative with the design and make some go this way, and then the next square go this way, and then the next square. So it'll um, create an interesting design if you choose to make a blanket out of this. Now, I did three colors for mine. I would recommend doing at least two colors for your square because these spike stitches uh, stand out and it's part of the design, you want them to show up, okay? So I would do at least two colors. I did three, you could do more um, if you want to. There are one, two, three, four, five uh, stripes in the center of this square, so you could do five colors if you want to as well. The finished square measures about 12 inches across and 12 inches tall. But later in the video, we're going to talk a little bit about um, increasing and decreasing your square based on the amount of rounds you do for the final uh, border frame of this as well. So it is customizable if you need to change up the size a little bit. So let's get started. When you're finished your square, you can leave this as is or you can lightly block it. Down below and in the written pattern on the Fiberflux blog, I'm going to put some links to both steam blocking your piece and wet blocking your piece. Now, wet blocking is generally for uh, natural fibers where you submerge it and then like pin it back. Uh, steam blocking, so this is acrylic yarn. Um, I would recommend steam blocking for uh, acrylic yarn where you sort of like you can use a professional steamer if you have one, but you could also sort of hover an iron over top of it. You never, ever, ever, ever want to let the iron touch the piece. It will melt the yarn, but I do have a tutorial for both types of blocking if you do choose to block your square. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure will be super helpful because we're going to try and get the 12 inches by 12 inches for our square. We're going to be using a six millimeter J crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey hook in case you're wondering. I'll put the link down below if you want to get one for yourself. And then for our yarn, we're going to be using some of our yarn leftovers from the autumn farmhouse blanket from our fall crochet along from last year. I still had some of the colors left over. Uh, they are using Red Heart with Love for all of the projects. So I'm obviously for a 12 inch by 12 inch square, I'm not going to be using all of this yarn, but I did want to show you, I'm going to be using small amounts of each of these colors, but if you want to replicate the colors that I'm using, I'm going to be using um, Tan, Mallard, and Erin. So uh, if you need to substitute look for a medium four on the yarn weight scale and a yarn that recommends a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook. Now, if you may notice, we're not using that size hook. It's gonna give us a little bit of a tighter uh, stitch when we work up our stitches. But um, if you use those parameters, you'll be just fine with your yarn substitutions and having your tape measure ruler handy as you make your square will be helpful as well. So let's get started. To begin, we're going to do our starting chain first. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Our starting chain is 24 chains. So what we're going to do is, let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to begin uh, by doing our 24 chains. So wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. So here is our starting chain. Then what we're going to do is work a half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. Go one and two. And then to make a half double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook 
insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, and then you're gonna wrap yarn around the hook and bring it through all three loops. Then what we're gonna do is work a half double crochet in each chain across. So again, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops, do that in every single chain all the way across. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working my half double crochets across, and then we'll rejoin towards the end of this row and continue on with our next row for row two. I'm gonna show you how to do that next. All right, just working that last half double crochet in that last chain. So you have a nice strip of half double crochet stitches at this point. Then we're gonna chain two, one, two, and turn our work. So then what you're gonna do is for row two, we're gonna work a half double crochet in that first stitch and in each stitch across. So work your half double crochet in each stitch. And I'm gonna keep going across and we'll rejoin at the end of this row as well. Okay, just coming up to the end of row two, working that half double crochet, and then we're also gonna work a half double crochet into that turning chain space as well at the end of the row. So here is row two. For row three, we're once again gonna chain two and turn, work a half double crochet into that first stitch, work a half double crochet in each stitch across. Okay, so just work across and we'll rejoin towards the end of this round, uh, row rather as well. Coming up to the end of row three, we're just working our half double crochets in each stitch and then in that turning chain space as well. Okay, so row three is complete. Then what we're gonna do is work row four. Row four is gonna be the same thing. Chain two and turn and work a half double crochet into that first stitch and in each stitch across, okay? So we're just working half double crochets across like we've been doing. Just like that. And I'm gonna continue working across row four and then we'll rejoin at the end of row four. The row after this, row five, is gonna be our spike row. So that's gonna be really fun. So, keep working across and we'll rejoin in just a minute. All right, coming up to the end of row four. And what we're gonna do now is once again, work in that last, that turning chain space as well. And then what we're gonna do is switch colors. So this is where we add our spike row. So the row five is the spike row. So what I'm gonna do is just simply cut the yarn and fasten off. Wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. And then we're gonna get our next color because we're going to be doing our spike. So for row five, what we're gonna do is insert the hook back into that last stitch that you worked and then hook the new yarn on. You can pick whatever color you like. And then we're gonna tie that right on. Okay, so go ahead and tie that right on. Now, if there's a way you prefer to join yarn, please feel free to do that. I'm just gonna tie mine right on. Okay, so then what we wanna do is reinsert the hook back into that same stitch, bring up a loop, and then we're gonna chain two. One, two, and turn our work. Then what we're gonna do is work a half double crochet into that first stitch. Work a half double crochet into the next stitch. Work a half double crochet into the next stitch. So the first three stitches, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work a spike. So for our spike, what we're gonna do is reach down a few rows when we do our stitch. So it's, it's worked the same way, it's just where we're gonna place our hook, okay? So we're gonna reach down uh, past the row that we're currently working in, past the next row, and the row down below that is where we'll work. So if you look at our piece, you can see there's a hole right there. It's lined up with the where we would normally put the hook. We're gonna go down to the hole two rows beneath that, okay? So wrap the yarn around the hook and go into that row way down there. 
You want to keep your tension nice and loose here so you can uh, get enough yarn around the piece, okay? And we're going to bring up a loop, keep everything nice and loose. See, I'm like sort of wiggling it around to bring up enough yarn. And then wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through all three loops, okay? Just like that. And you can see how our yarn reaches down. Now, if you get a little bit of twisting like this, you can just sort of like pick it up and just kind of straighten it out, okay? So next, we're going to go into the next stitch and work a half double crochet. Go into the next stitch, work a, work a half double crochet. Go into the next stitch, work a half double crochet. And then we're gonna do a spike again. So instead of going in here, we're gonna go two down. Wrap the yarn around the hook, reach way down to that stitch down here, loosening things up, keeping your tension nice and loose, sort of giving it a wiggle to get enough yarn around it. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through all three loops. And there is our next spike, okay? Then we're gonna work a half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, and then we're ready to do a spike again. So instead of working into the next stitch, we're gonna go wrap yarn around hook, go a couple rows down. Make sure you're placing it in the same place every time you do a spike. Loosen things up a little bit, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops, and there's your spike. All right, next you're gonna work a half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, and we're ready to work a spike again, okay? So what we're gonna do is go, remember, two down, insert the hook, bring up a loop, wiggle it around a little bit, get it nice and loose, wrap your yarn around the hook, bring it through all three loops. Then work a half double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch, and now we're ready to work another spike. So where we would go in this one, we're gonna go down here. Wrap the yarn around the hook, go down those two rows, bring up a loop, wiggle it around, get things nice and loose. You don't want it to be tight because it'll, it'll pull your work in. Wrap your yarn around the hook, bring it through all three loops. And then we're gonna work a half double crochet in the next stitch. And we're just gonna finish off the row with half double crochet stitches, okay? Just like that. So let's look at our handiwork. We have some beautiful spikes and they're nice and centered on our row. Okay, now, if you're having a little bit of like, if, it, if it's like kind of uh, pulling in or puckering up a little bit, you can kind of like go back in there and sort of straighten things out a little bit. If you have some twisting of your spikes, you can sort of straighten them out at this time. Okay, let's keep going. Chain two, this is row six. One, two, and turn your work. Then we're just gonna work a half double crochet into that first stitch and in every stitch across, okay? So this is just the same thing we've been doing up until this point um, so far. Okay, so we're just gonna work half double crochets all the way across. Okay, so for the rest of our square, we're just gonna be repeating rows two through five over and over and over again until our square is as tall as it is wide, okay? Now, you could just use this as a blanket square, but after this, after we get to the height that we need, I'm gonna show you how to put a nice border around the whole thing, okay? So remember, just chain two, one, two, turn your work, and we're just gonna work half double crochet. So repeat rows two through five over and over and over again, and switch colors when you work your spike row um, so that it, you have the, the maximum amount of contrast and you can really see those spike stitches. So I would recommend changing colors on the spike row each time. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going with my colors. Um, I'm gonna do a sequence of this teal and then this tan and then I'm gonna add the cream and then I'm gonna start over uh, with the, the teal, tan, cream, teal, tan, cream, okay? So keep going with rows two through five over and over until we get the same width 
um, and height. So the height and the width are equal to one another and they make a perfect square. Another way you can tell is if you have something, um, when your piece is looking square, you can take this corner and fold it up uh, diagonally across to the other corner. And if you don't have any overhang on each side, if it makes a perfect little triangle without any overhang, then your square um, is nice and square. You can also use your tape measure, obviously, to measure width and height and see if they're uh, equal to one another. So just keep going with rows two through five. If you need to back up the video or do slow motion, uh, feel free to do that. And we will rejoin in just a moment and I'm gonna show you how to kind of finish this part up and we're gonna move on to a nice border next. Just working that last stitch of the row and now we have a nice little square. I've used all the colors and repeated some of them. So the next thing we want to do is frame in our square. All right, so what we need to do next is fasten this off. Just cut the yarn, wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through the loop and tighten. And then we're gonna take care of all these ends before we proceed and it'll kind of simplify things a little bit. Um, what you wanna do when you're doing any kind of stripe projects like this is to grab your tapestry needle, thread your needle, and when you weave the ends in, stay in the same color stripe if you don't, the tail will, you'll just see this like big teal line going through a different area, okay? So go ahead and go in one direction with your tail, the way I like to do it, and then you can come back in the other direction to sort of help lock that tail into place, okay? So just come back this way. Give it a nice little tug, grab your scissors, and give it a trim. Okay, and then just repeat for all of your other tails and then we'll start working on our little frame. So we've woven in all of our ends and now we're going to add a simple half double crochet border. I just wanted to let you know at this point before we add the border, my square is measuring about eight inches across and eight inches tall. So because I only was able to use the cream color once, now depending on the colors you have chosen, you might make different design and color choices accordingly, but I kind of want to move this cream color through the square a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to choose the cream to add the first um, color of my border. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab this teal here just to give it a little bit of a background because we are going to... Um, we have a white surface and cream color yarn, so I want you to really be able to see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work half double crochets all the way around our square. But when we get to a corner, we're gonna work three half double crochets. When we round a corner like that, if we just did one, it would draw the corner inward, and we definitely don't want that. So to start our square, what we wanna do is insert the hook into that first stitch, um, we're gonna, if we look at our square, we're gonna go to the upper right corner, okay? So insert the hook into that upper right corner and we're gonna hook the new yarn on to our hook and we're gonna bring it through and just tie it right on, okay? So just tie that new color right on there and we're gonna start now, I did say three half double crochets in each corner, but we need to do a starting chain here um, and that will count as one of our half double crochets. So for this very first square and the first, uh, excuse me, the very first stitch and the first stitch only of the round, we're gonna insert the hook, bring up a loop and we're gonna chain two. And that chain two is gonna count as one of our half double crochets. For the rest of the corners, we'll do three half double crochets. But for this first one, we're gonna do a chain two and then work two half double crochets into that first corner. One and two. Okay, next we're gonna work a half double crochet in each one of these stitches across. So just work all the way across with half double crochet stitches in each stitch. Okay, we worked our half double crochets across and now we're to our first corner. So like I mentioned before, we're gonna work three half double crochets in each corner. So one, two, and three. Okay, so now we're ready to work down the side. Now that can be a little bit more tricky because we're not working into these very well-defined stitches that were at the top that were more obvious to us, um, but we can still do this and make it look nice and neat. I do wanna say, because we're making this a square, it's a good idea to go ahead not including the corners. So eliminating these three half double crochets at either end 
count the number of stitches in between. I have 21 stitches. So our goal here is as we work down to try to incorporate 21 stitches into the side to keep it consistent. Um, and that will keep things even as well. So we can kind of estimate a little bit. We have five stripes, one, two, three, four, five, and we have 21 stitches that we need to incorporate. So, so roughly speaking, if we divide five into 20, we're going to have four stitches per stripe. Now, again, I said 21, so there will be an extra stitch in there somewhere, but your goal is to, not including these three half double crochets in the corners, but try to get 21 stitches across so that this is even, okay? So what we're gonna do is try to do four per stripe and then we'll add the, that 21st stitch. So work, um, now you can see at the end of each one of these rows here, there is an opening, okay? So you can kind of see where to work these into. So let's work, try to work four in each stripe. So one, let's, um, you can even kind of map it out ahead of time. One, two, three, and four, okay? That was one two, three, and four. Now, depending on the size of the square that you made, you may have a little bit more across or less, but um, if you just try to keep the same number of stitches on both sides to keep it like a truly square shape and less of a rectangle, that will help a lot. All right, let's work four down this teal side here. One, two, three, and four, okay? So onto the cream, we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. Now you notice that the uh, cream is a little bit more forgiving when you're working the same color into the other color. It's a little bit more obvious with the teal, but it's okay. Okay, now remember we had an extra stitch we needed to find a spot for, so I'm gonna just sort of put it in the middle. So go ahead and work that extra stitch there, okay? Now hop to the next area of color, and we're gonna work four half double crochets on that section. One, two, three, and four, spacing it out the best you can. Hop to the next one and work your four. One, two, three, and four, okay? So we sort of spaced them out the best we could and added that extra stitch sort of in the middle. Not, it doesn't have to be the exact middle, but we now have 21 stitches this way and 21 stitches this way, which was our goal. Okay, remember the corners, we're working three half double crochets. So now along this side, um, we have chains, starting chains. Okay, so that might be a little bit different and look a little bit different, but again, we wanna try to get those 21 stitches or whatever your stitches were on that first pass, okay? You might have, depending on the size of your square and how many chains you started with, if you wanted to change the dimensions, um, you may have a different count than me, but just try to keep it the same number all the way around. Um, okay, so we're gonna go in this corner, and because it was a chain, it might be a little bit uh, trickier to kind of dig out here, but we're gonna go, I'm gonna kind of help it back here a little bit. We're gonna work our three half double crochets into this corner. So one, two, and three. All right, and then we're going to work our stitches across, okay? So again, we have chains. So we're just gonna go into the bottom here with our half double crochets. Just make sure you're picking up two loops when you do that, because you don't want to distort it, okay? So we're gonna go one, two, three, four,
five. Now if you notice, whoops, if you notice here, I'm going nice and slow because I'm making sure I'm picking up both of those loops on the bottom so I'm not stretching anything out here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, so nice and slow, 18, 19, 20, and then I think I'm gonna use, make, this is gonna be the corner. So if you need to add two and one, that's okay too, okay? Whatever you need to do to get those 21 in there, okay? Yep. Now we're gonna turn and work three half double crochets in the corner, one, two, three. And I forgot to mention this before, but if you're coming up to the end, and I put one here to show you, if you're coming up to the end and you're sort of out of places to work, that 21st stitch, if you will, you can just throw two in, into the one, it's okay. We're just putting a border on and it, it will definitely blend, okay? Now, we're gonna work up the final side and we're gonna treat it the same way we did back here. You wanna get your 21 stitches in there. So I found the easiest way to do that was work four per stripe and add that extra one sort of in the middle somewhere, okay? It'll probably blend most in this cream section, just as a, a side note, okay? So once again, we're gonna do our four half double crochets in each section here. And again, this is what I came up with for my particular square, but you just wanna make sure you get this, the same number of stitches along each side. No matter what the count is, just make sure, for your, for your own square, no matter what the count is, just make sure you get the same number on each side, okay? All right, so I got four on that one. We're gonna go four on this one. One, two, three, and four, and then I'm gonna put four in this cream one, but I'm gonna stick this extra one right here, okay? So we'll do that when, that'll be our extra one. And go one, two, three, and four, okay? Just to spread them out nice and even, okay? Hop to the next one, one, two, three, and four. Next section, one, two, three, and four. All right, now we're at the end of the round. We're gonna join with a slip stitch. So count two chains up from where you started. Remember it was a chain two at the beginning of the round and join with a slip stitch, okay? Insert the hook into that second chain up. It might be a little snug, that's okay. Bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, okay? Now let's look at our handiwork here because we did quite a bit of counting and fiddling with this to get it even, okay? So you should have, no matter what your count was, you should have the same number of stitches along each side, however you had to arrive at that um, for your border, um, not including the corners where we worked three half double crochets, okay? Okay, now we need to get our hook to the right spot, and that is the centermost half double crochet of our corner, okay? So what we need to do is slip stitch into that first half double crochet of the corner. So insert the hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, 
and then we're going to work a slip stitch into that centermost half double crochet and now we're in the right spot so what we need to do is work our first corner and this round is going to be a little bit easier we're not going to be counting we're just working into stitches but what we want to do is chain two and then work two half double crochets into that same stitch one and two and now we've created a new corner for this round okay so then what you want to do is work a half double crochet into the next stitch and in every stitch across okay so just work your half double crochets in each stitch across and now we have defined stitches all the way around our square unlike before we were counting and spacing things out properly we now have actual stitches so this round will be a little bit easier because everything will be a little bit more clearly defined for us as to where we're working so i'm just working across and we're going to treat the corners the same way as we did in the previous round so remember at the beginning here we did the chain two and then two half double crochets but in each corner we're going to work three half double crochets from here on out okay so just work your half double crochets all the way across just like that coming up to the end here and then what you'll want to do is when you get once again when you get to that center most half double crochet um, and I'm coming up to it so I'll show you see we have our three half double crochets we worked so work a half double crochet into that first half double crochet and then when you get to that center most one work three half double crochets into that so one two and three and then you're going to continue around doing the same thing work a half double crochet in each stitch across and then when you get to the corner just like we just did work three half double crochets in that center most stitch of the corner okay so keep doing this all the way around I'm going to continue working around and we'll rejoin towards the end of this round and move on to our next round okay just coming up to the end of the round with our last half double crochet and then where we begin I'm just going to join with a slip stitch to close the round now what you're going to do to finish your square is you can repeat this round that we just did over and over until your square is as large as you would like it to be I want my square to be 12 inches by 12 inches so i'm going to go ahead and keep repeating my border until my square is as long and tall as i would like it to be now just to give you an idea where we're at here i'm at about 10 inches um, by 10 inches on mine so I'm just going to keep repeating this border uh, the round we just worked on until my square is 12 by 12 now what you can do too is switch colors so you can um, keep going with the same color and just make it like a large one color frame or what you can do is you can cut the yarn and fasten off just like that and then grab your next color and add some more border colors so I think I'm gonna do um, this beige color for mine uh, just to keep in line with the the kind of ombre effect I guess and okay so you can grab another color or whatever color you want to do and that last stitch that we worked just reinsert and I can zoom in a little bit reinsert the hook back into that stitch hook it right on there pull it through similar to how we changed colors before and then you're just going to tie it right on and repeat that round okay and so to get started all you'll want to do and you can these ends you can hold them along this edge and weave them along uh, weave them in as you go along that'll save you a step later but just reinsert the hook back in bring up a loop and then you're ready to roll with your new color so just keep repeating that round for as, lo as large as you would like your square to be and then we're going to rejoin in just a minute I'm going to show you the progress that I made with my rounds and then we will finish up our square and do a little bit of uh, weaving in and finish work on that okay just working that very last stitch of the round here and I'm going to join with a slip stitch in that topmost chain where we began the round to close the round and our square is finished it looks awesome now each time I do a round I like to give it a little tug just kind of straighten things out 
Uh, so when you're finished and you've added as many rounds as you want, I added rounds, let me just zoom out a little bit, until mine was 12 by 12. But it's very customizable if you need a different size, it's pretty easy to adjust. So go ahead when you're finished and cut the yarn. And just as a side note, we did a round, the first round was to get the stitch count even. And then we did a second round of the cream color. And then we did two rounds of the beige and then one final round of the teal color. Okay, just to give you an idea of how many rounds we put on there. So the last thing you'll need to do is to weave in your ends. Now some of these ends, if we flip over to the back, and the back looks equally pretty, I think. Um, some of these ends I held along the edge as I went along. So all you'll have to do is just kind of hold it down flat, give it a nice little tug and a snip and then straighten it back out, okay? Some of the ends, uh, like see there's a little knot there where I started a new section of color. You'll have to weave those in. And I just wanted to point out when you weave these in, uh, this is a cream color yarn, you want to stay in that color section because if you go into a different section, uh, you'll see this like line of uh, cream through a different area, okay? So just try to keep the colors um, kind of in the same areas as each other. Okay, so I like to go in one direction, come back in the other direction. Try to get it through the back loops so it doesn't kind of migrate to the front of your project. Okay, and then you're just gonna repeat for all of your ends and you'll have one here where we just finished the square as well. And I have mine flipped over to the back just to kind of keep me straight as far as um, not weaving the ends in around the front part of my square, okay? Because that's the side that everyone will see, so you'll want to keep um, everything to the back, okay? So go ahead and finish weaving any ends that you may have. So our ends are all woven in and everything looks great. I really love the geometric simplicity of this and those spikes just add a little fun detail to it as well. So that is how you crochet the stripey spikes square. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flex video updates. Thanks again.